Hello everyone, I'm Carrot, the Director of Business at Project Community. Today, we're going to be taking a look at one of our big projects, the long-awaited Project Community SDK. The SDK is made to streamline the process of creating and submitting content to PJKT events. Over time, the SDK will evolve to support more features, but for now, our focus is on the upcoming Project Festival at the end of June. To get started with the SDK, we're going to need the VRChat Creator Companion, so hop on over to the VRChat website and download that if you haven't already. You can find it at vrchat.com slash home slash download. If you've never used it before, don't worry. VRChat has a nice overview video, which you can find linked here in the in the thingy or in, down below somewhere. I recommend pausing this video and going and watching that one before continuing on. Okay, so quick start guide for the Creator Companion. Uh, if you already have a Unity project for your booth, but it wasn't created with the Creator Companion, you'll need to migrate it to the Creator Companion. Uh, again, that video that I recommended teaches you how to do that, so I highly recommend going and watching that, uh, as well as reading up on the VRChat documentation for migrating projects. Otherwise, if you don't have a project, we can easily create one by clicking on this little button up here and then clicking on the Worlds template. Or if your existing booth project is already part of the Creator Companion, you can just skip this step. Now that we have our project set up with the Creator Companion, it's time to add the PJKT SDK to it. Hop on over to sdk.projectcommunity.com and click on this fancy little Add to VCC button. This should prompt you to add the PJKT SDK VPN package to the Creator Companion, the little dialog box that pops up at the top, like, hey, can we, can we do this? Are you, is that okay? Just click yes. Once it's been added to the Creator Companion, let's go to our booth project and click on Manage Project, and that'll show all of the packages that are installed in that project. Near the bottom, you should see Project Community SDK, and you just hit the little plus button and that'll, that'll install it in that project. Now, if you don't see the SDK listed at the bottom there, make sure you have the Project Community selected in the repository dropdown from the top right. Just hit the little box. After that, the Creator Companion should take care of installing all the required packages, and that's it for installation. Now we can head over to Unity. Here in Unity, we should have a little tab at the top that says PJKT SDK. Clicking on that opens the SDK window. You will first be presented with a login screen. Here you can go ahead and make an account, since if you're watching this, you probably don't have one. And don't worry, we're not doing anything with your email, it's just for the account services we're using, in case we need to send you a password reset. Now that we have an account, we will get access to the SDK tools for this year's festival. As you can see, there's not much here right now. To get started, we need to tell the SDK that we have a booth. To do this, we need to add a booth descriptor component to a game object in our scene. We'll just use a cube for now. Good old cube booth. Now the SDK can see the cube booth and has selected it by default. If you're working on multiple booth designs, you can add a booth descriptor to each one and select between them with the little select booth button, which will show a neat little preview. Below that, you can see all of the requirements for custom booths at this year's event, as well as a performance ranking for each category. Each category can be expanded to show all of the objects that contribute to the performance ranking. And double clicking an object will take you right to it. So the next time you're wondering where the 50 materials are coming from, you can easily find them. Now, cube booth is great and all, but it's not really representative of what you'll see at the event. So we included some examples. Let's hop over to the example scene, which you can find in packages slash project community SDK slash runtime slash examples. Quite a mouthful. Now, we don't recommend working on your booth in the example scene, but it is a nice reference. All right, now we've included a bunch of cool stuff with the examples. Firstly, we have a post-processing profile that's pretty close to what you'll see used in the event worlds. Next up, we have a skybox material to help set the mood with the nighttime theme you might have seen in some of our other videos, as well as the default booth prefab that we'll be using for those who opt to submit a texture instead of making their own custom booth. But hang on, there's even more. Included with the SDK are a few simple Udon scripts. Now, while we don't allow custom Udon code, we have been working on ways to allow for a little bit more creative freedom. Here in the scripts folder, we have the toggle game object button you may have seen at some previous events, as well as some new ones. We noticed some really clever animators out there doing cool tricks to play animations at a previous event without using any Udon code, so this time we decided to just give you guys the tools to do this directly. We have a script for a button that will play an animation state when it's clicked, a script for setting a value to an integer animation parameter, and a script for setting an animation trigger. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's fine, don't worry about it. It's just some crazy animation stuff for those who want to add some cool effects to their booths. 
Now, as I said before, we don't allow any custom udon code, so outside of these udon behaviors and a few of the ones included with the VRChat SDK for like avatar pedestals and such, you will not be able to upload your booth if it has any other udon programs on it. Speaking of uploading, how do we do that? How do we, how do we, how does point A to point B happen, right? Well, you gotta click on the little upload button. This, this one right up here that's slightly misaligned with the buttons above it. Glad I could ruin that for you. If your booth meets all of the requirements and there's no red performance ranks, then you'll be able to click on the upload booth button. Otherwise, it'll be grayed out and unclickable until you fix the performance categories that are marked as poor or error. Now, clicking on the upload booth button will begin the process of packaging up your booth and shipping it off to our server, where our development team can access the files and place your booth within the world. This process happens in the background, so after clicking on upload booth, keep an eye on the console to see where it's at in case it runs into any issues. After a short time, you'll be presented with a pop-up that either has a smiley face or a big sad, depending on whether the upload was successful or not. Looking at the console, we can see here that we got an error saying that we have not been verified for SDK use. Since we just made this account, we need to have it approved for booth uploads. To prevent just any old person from uploading whatever they want, we manually approve communities and creators through our booth applications. Once your booth application has been approved and you've been given the representative role in the Discord, we will need to greenlight the account you made for the SDK. Simply reach out to either me, Carrot, or Pesky12 with the email address you used when signing up and we'll get it approved as soon as possible. In the meantime, you can still use the tools to create your booth while waiting on approval. Now that our account is authorized for uploads, we can click the button again and our booth is successfully uploaded. Now a few things to note about this upload process. Any future uploads from this account will overwrite the previous one. In the future this may change, but for now, whatever was sent the last time you clicked the upload booth button is the only thing we have. Secondly, when signing up, you should have entered a name for your group or community. When we receive the booths, they are sorted by this name. So if you have multiple people in your community working on the booth, then we recommend using some sort of source control like Git, as we will only be approving one account per community. If you lose access to this account for whatever reason, then don't worry, we can move the upload permissions to another one. And I think that's it. If you have any issues or run into any scary errors, let us know and we'll take a look. But hopefully this will help streamline the booth creation and submission process for all future events. As always, we appreciate your patience and we hope to see you at the festival. Thank you